here. See how that looks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you doing all right? Are you having fun? Hey. Ah yes, we've got the angel and the alien today. What bees less shy, aren't you girl? So now we're gonna connect to Wi-Fi. All you do is turn the camera on itself to start with. See that's his icon there. And then you get a picture in the back on the monitor. Now on the side here is a little button that says Wi-Fi. So what you do then is you press that down. And that will tell you that it's looking for a Wi-Fi connection. And what we'll do then is open your phone up, you download the app, the Ecan app, or Ecan app, and then you go to settings and connections, then connections, <laughs> then Wi Fi, then it'll be looking for the, uh, there you go, the iCam. H5S Plus, so you click on that one, so that's the one that we want to use, and then come out of that and open your app. The app that you use is called Easy Cam, you can find that on Play Store. Open that up, Easy iCam, and it says it's connected, so you click on the connected part. And that should bring up an image, which it does. It's bringing up an image of what the camera sees. Yeah, I'll move that around there a little bit. And what, it do, what we're doing is you can control the camera from your app on the phone, which is nice. Tells you all the things you can do. Photo, video, TL, video. Now, TL, that just stands for time lapse. I don't know why it, they don't just put time lapse. I didn't realize it was so difficult to do. <laughs> and then you can just go into your settings here, which tells you app version or if you want to format the SD card that you've got. In here, we've got your resolution. You can change the resolution too. So we'll tick that one off and we can continue onwards. And then when you want to. You've got a choice between video, you can record video, or you press that, and that'll go to the photo mode. And if you want to take a photograph, just press the button, and you'll get a nice photograph taken. Tell you what's nice, it looks good. The quality looks very good. So I'm glad we have that. A lot of cameras do have that remote control from your phone too. So real quick, on this Ekin camera, we have that is the amount of time that's gone since that you are recording the bottom part tells you what you're recording in in this case it's uh, EIS 1080 at 60 frames per second that green bar there is your battery and that's it for that side now here as I pointed out earlier on just press that if you want to connect to Wi-Fi I think that might be a microphone in there now on this side here You've got the SD card, HDMI port there, and we've got the USB port there, which you can take information onto your computer if you want to download the photographs or video. HDMI port there is so you can plug in and look in real time on a TV set or some kind of monitor. And on the bottom we've got the, the door that lets us into the battery area if you want to change the battery. But you don't have to change it out or do anything because you can just charge the battery through the USB port there. That's what I do. Then you don't have lots of moving parts and things like that. On the back where the monitor of the camera is, you can see on the top left hand side a video camera. Now, when you want to change modes, you can either swipe the screen because it's a touch screen. Or you can press the button at the front, the mode button. You press it once, it takes you into photographic mode. Press it one more time, it takes you into settings. Now you've got your burst control, that means taking several photographs at once. Your TL video, which is time-lapse video. Then time-lapse photo. 
and then video that show you what video has already been recorded on the camera same with that it's like a photo gallery and then you go into settings now then once you get the settings if you want to change things just press that button on the top there and what do you come up with okay we've got video resolution let's see what that is we'll press that to get into it you've got a choice of 4k at 30 frames per second 4k at 25 frames per second eis now you've got 2.7k 60 frames a second and then 2.7 frames 30 frames per second eis so it will go down down and what else have we got 1080 are 100 frames per second we'll get some video of that and see how that looks 1080 at 60 frames per second EIS that's probably the best setting for this camera and then 720 at 200 frames per second for a severe slow motion you would imagine <laughs> okay and then next there we've got the photo resolution video interval press on that and you have it one minute or five minutes going on down we've got looping video that's like on a if you're using the camera as a dash cam on your car that's a time stamp if you want that to be ex shown on the video that you're recording then exposure sometimes you have to adjust that for the light conditions then you've got a burst mode that's like several photographs at once for t time lapse photo video interval okay time lapse video resolution time lapse video interval power frequency now in the US what we got is we're on 60 Hertz so you adjust that 60 that's what we want now then then you got language remote control that comes with on those watch wrist things that you can turn the camera on and off date and time sets your date and time of course sound indicator tells you we'll press that let's see what we got now you've got your shutter sound your startup sound your beep sound and your volume sound so we've got we've got all of those guys screen saver that'll you know turn the screen off after a few minutes if you wanted to you can set it at different times you know a minute two minute five minute power saver format that can format the SD card in the camera and then that would reset everything reset all the settings it tells you what version it is and that's it pretty much and then when you want to record video you just press that button there same as when you want to take photographs but as I say this camera is quite intuitive to use I've only had it since yesterday so I'm just going through all the different settings and stuff pretty much like any action camera i'm not sure what that screen at the front is so i don't know if that will change into like a regular monitor a front facing monitor who knows i weighed this camera and it, it comes in about 102 grams now the orsec the other camera action camera same thing is only like 67 grams so this is twice as heavy as a normal action camera Probably something to do with the fact it has a metal casing on which will make it more robust if it's out doing action work. So far so good on this camera. Uh, please give me your feedback about this. What do you think of the images? Okay I'm going to try this camera at different resolutions. This is at 4K. 30 frames per second is what they say. That's no image stabilization. I'm just walking kind of normally. Now then, oddly, oddly enough, the image is not shaking around in the monitor. So, okay, 30 frames per second. Now we're at 25 frames per second. Four here and we've got the electronic image stabilization turned on it's been raining like crazy all day but you 
can't do it. Well, that's not so, you know, it's not bad. It's just, it's spring, obviously the ground needs it. So that's 4K, 25 frames per second. Now we're at 2.7K, 60 frames per second. And I can hear over here the, the culvert's doing well, oh yes. Uh, Now we're at 2.7k, 30 frames per second with electronic image stabilization on. Oh yes, nice muddy water there. So I don't know how the... Uh, how stabilised it is. Looks great through the monitor though, I'll tell you that. 2.7, that might be the optimum, you know, recording video situation. How does that look there? Okay, that was 100 frames per second and uh, it was in the, the special key so you probably didn't hear any. Now this is 1080 at 60 frames per second and it's got electronic image stabilization on. I thought this might be the best resolution but I don't know. We'll see once we get back to the editing machine. How's the video? Is it taking good video? Who knows? Oh look, beautiful deer. Look at that, lovely deer. Okay, I should have got me in the whole of the video just to see how it looks. Okay, now we're doing electronic image stabilization at 4K, 25 frames per second. I'm just putting this in so I forgot to get it earlier on. Well, there we go. How's that look? Look at this water. It's getting ready just to, to come over the, the over the road here. Yeah, this is 2.7k at 60 frames per second. No EIS, I don't think. Picking up the water situation there. Look at that. And 2.7k. 30 frames per second with electronic image stabilization on. Electronic image stabilization on. Look at that, that's coming down right there. 2.7 at 30 with EIS on. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're at 2.7 with EIS and I've turned down the exposure by. Point three, because it was looking a little bit washed out, and that might change the video. We'll see. So this is it with the exposure turned down. Exposure turned down. I'll also take some video of the uh, driving in the car with this camera. See how that works. Ah, oh, it's looking like the daffodils are getting ready to come out. Look at that. Just waiting. For the signal, and then they'll all be shooting upwards and turning into flowers. They're already shooting upwards. And it looks like a flower getting ready to come out right there, doesn't it? Beautiful. How does the water look there? That's what I, that's what I want to try and capture. I want to try this in a different resolution. We're at 2.7 EIS 30 frames per second. Now we're at 30 frames per second with no AIS, just now we're at 1080, 60 frames per second with AIS on it. The wind's not blowing much so you're not getting much ripple. Okay, it's starting just a little there. Just want to see how it records that. 
makes a big difference. What does make a big difference is this touch screen. What a great idea.